Hey guys and girls and welcome to another pickup video. Alright, it's been a while since I made since I last made a pickup video, but for this one I've actually got quite a variety of games today, so um, yeah, let's not be about the bush and head straight into it. Um, Yesterday I went down to South London to my favourite uh, retro shop, Retro Game Base in Streatham and I picked up uh, quite a number of games actually so um, first up is a game for the Famicom Disk System, a system I still don't own yet and that is this little gem right here, the camera will focus, there we go Moero Twinby Cinnamon something, something or other <laughs> I can't translate this last bit here but yeah, those of you who may be aware of Twinby, it's a um, quite a decent little shooter actually and um, I quite like it um, I've got a version of it on um, Game Room for the uh, Xbox 360 so uh, yeah I, I quite like Twin Bees so I'm just going to put that to the side because obviously the exposed magnetic disc I don't want to get that dirty or anything uh, next up is a couple of Famicom games uh, first up we have Pachicom which is just a simple pachinko game <laughs> you know it only cost me a fiver, so I thought to myself, you know, I don't mind pachinko so much. I mean, I don't actually play actual pachinko, but there's that, obviously, there's that little mini game on Nintendo Land, which is practically pachinko. So, um, yeah. And also, I like Peggle as well, which is a, technically a version of pachinko. So, and next up, some of you may be familiar with this. Um, it is Itadaki Street. Um, what was that? A version of this recently came out on the Wii. Uh, some of us know it as Boom Street and the others know it as Fortune Street but it's basically pretty much Japan's take on Monopoly <laughs> it essentially is the same as Monopoly but I think there's a few subtle differences between the two I'm not sure, I've not actually played Itadaki Street would you believe so playing that version was actually, um, it's actually going to be um, interesting I'll tell you what guys, I'm really glad that I can actually read basic Japanese because with both Itadaki Street and Twinbee, I would have had no idea what, the, what these would have said. I may have just about gotten away with it if I'd have, um, if I'd have recognised this picture, but I didn't. So, um, and of course, Twinbee, I'm like, there's nothing, no picture on this at all, giving us away what this game is. So, I'm quite glad that I could read basic Japanese. And right next up is a game, funny enough, for the Neo Geo Pocket Color. I bought that uh, handheld. I don't even remember how long ago. I don't even remember what when I uploaded the video because that was on the same day, if I remember rightly. Uh, but yeah, I bought a new game for it, and that is Puzzle Bobble Mini. I actually quite like the fact that it, this, this, believe it or not, this actually came out in Europe, and in Europe, Puzzle Bobble is known as Buster Move. I don't know why, it just is. So it's actually nice to have it come out as Puzzle Bobble for once. And you got Bob and Bob and the traditional uh, Bobble Bobble enemies on there. Yeah, yeah, I saw it there. It was, uh, it was 20 quid, but to be honest, a lot of Neo Geo games, they generally are quite expensive because of the name. You know, you, you're going to pay quite a premium for Neo Geo games. And it looks simplistic, but it plays so well. It is such a good game. I absolutely love Puzzle Bubble. I don't think I own another version of Puzzle Bubble, actually. I think this may be the only one I have. Oh, I tell a lie. I think I may own a version for PlayStation 2, but I don't remember off the top of my head, so... That's Puzzle Bubble Mini. And this, this last game, this game is fucking brilliant. I can't believe I actually own a legitimate physical copy of this game. But it is... Da 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 da! Parodius Da! Um, I don't know how many people out there may know about Parodius. There's probably a lot more that know about it than I realise. But some of you may be aware of a game on the NES called Gradius, or Gradius, whatever you prefer to pronounce it. And Parodius is a piss take of that game. Or a parody, as uh, the port mode is... Um, is here. It's a, obviously it's a port mouth of um, parody and Gradius, but, but yeah, I actually like this game. It's absolutely fantastic. You know, where else could you say that you play a spaceship shooter game where you play as either a penguin or um, an octopus? I couldn't even think of fucking octopus, and it's right there in front of me. And a good thing about this is it also has Twin Bee in it as well. So yeah, we're, we're all about the Twin Bee at the minute. <laughs> so yeah. And of course, both Parodius and Gradius are both made by Konami, so Konami are allowed to do this. Not that any other company will probably stop themselves from doing it anyway. But yeah, I quite like this game. It's um, it's actually pretty good, and it's actually given me a reason to dig out my Super Nintendo um, arcade stick again, as well as the uh, action replay, so I can just get the damn thing to play on my um, on my SNES because I don't have a, a Japanese um, 
SNES. Just a European one. And it's not even modified either, so... So yeah, that's uh, my my spoils from Retro Gamer Base. Retro Game Base, excuse me. I always call it Gamer for some reason. Uh, next up is uh, just a couple of titles I got from uh, CEX the other day. And first up is... L.A. Noir, the complete edition for PlayStation 3. Now, I already do own this for Xbox 360. But, you know, it's £5, and I really do enjoy this. And, you know, it's really a good game. Yeah. And it's got all the uh, additional uh, stuff in it. So, yeah, £5 for stuff, uh, you know, all of that. It's a bargain. And the funny thing is, actually, I should have told you this. Uh, it's a, it cost me five quid, but if you look carefully, it's just for L.A. Noir Standard Edition. <laughs> it was a bit of a misprice, actually, because if you're going to CEX at the minute, uh, the Complete Edition is actually eight quid. And this was the only copy of the Complete Edition left on there, so I was like, hmm, should I take the moral ground and actually buy the normal edition for a fiver, which is what it should be, or should I be cheeky and get the Complete Edition? The answer's right in front of you. <laughs> And uh, I couldn't pass up this next game, you know, it was only £2.50, and to be honest, we all love this game, who doesn't? Who wants to be a millionaire? And it's got additional Chris Town on it as well, which is actually something I'm really pleased about, because I've got the demo of uh, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire on uh, Xbox uh, Live Arcade, and I've got to be honest, I don't like the generic host on that, it's just like really boring I'm like seriously where's my Chris Tarrant you know get that DLC done now we need <laughs> we need our Chris Tarrant for who wants to be a next it's just I don't know from my point of view it's just not the same without him so yeah that's uh, those two games from uh, Computer Exchange now uh, I've got uh, three more games to go these is actually a trio of games that I bought from um, the MCM Expo in October but I decided not to do a pickup video at the time because it's only three games, and I decided it probably wasn't worth. Um, uh, excuse me, it wasn't worth the time to uh, make you know just a simple and quick pickup video. So you know I'll leave them for another pickup video, which obviously turned out to be this one. And um, yeah, first game is Pandemonium 2 for PlayStation One. I absolutely fucking love this game. Uh, I played the uh, first one; it was good, but I didn't really play too much of it. And same actually applies to Pandemonium 2. I played the demo of it from official PlayStation magazine and I was just like, oh my god, this game is so good. Um, I also have this on a PC, but it doesn't work on my uh, Vista laptop. And I'm pretty sure there's a workaround for that, but to be honest with you, I just can't be asked to find out. <laughs> so I just get the PlayStation version instead. Now this game, this game I've been looking for for absolutely ages, or at least a decent priced version of it anyway. It is available on a PlayStation Network, but I always prefer physical games to download. I can't help it. I'm traditional like that. And the game is Kurushi. Oh yes, known as Intelligent Cube. I think it's known as Intelligent Cube um, in NTSC regions, North America and Japan as well. Uh, well, North America as well as Japan. So, oh. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's the case anyway, so uh, yeah, Kurushi, I fucking love this. I got a demo of this on, a, again, official PlayStation Magazine demo disc, and I just fell in love with this game so much. It's it's, it's a block puzzle, if I show you the back of it. It's, a, yeah, it's a little block puzzle game, and it's absolutely fantastic. That's pretty much all I can say about it. It's, uh, I've been after this for so long. And of course, there's a, a sequel to it called Kurushi Final, which I hope to get hold of at some point, but... Oh yeah, start the game. I don't think I showed you the inside of Pandemonium 2. Not that matters too much. Then again, you never know. Here, our Pandemonium 2 with Gex Enter the Gecko, out now on PlayStation 1. <laughs> don't forget to reserve your copy. Right, last but not least, this is a classic game in the traditional sense. This is a game for the Mega Drive. And it's a Disney game, and it is Quackshot, starring Donald Duck. I've not actually played this yet. I've had this since October for, what, nearly two months now? I haven't played it yet. I don't know why, because I actually kind of like the, uh, the, the Mega Drive Disney games. So, yeah, that's uh, that's my haul for, for this video. It's actually quite a bit, actually. And we're about to hit our 10 minute target. So uh, yeah, guys, until next time, take care of yourselves and thanks for watching.